Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dow from Fleming Island, Florida. I'm going to greet everybody this morning uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank Him for this time and opportunity that we have to, to spread the message of the hour, which you say, well, what is the message of the hour? The message of the hour is Jesus, Jesus Christ. Is there any other message? Uh, some people, they get confused uh, when you're talking about the message of the hour. The message of the hour in Paul's day was Jesus Christ. And from that day to this day, the message of the hour is Jesus Christ. Of course, there's a word given for every day and every age, and it's nothing but the Word manifested, which is Jesus Christ. So there's a, not another message or not another person other than the person of Jesus Christ. And that person gets in other persons and uses them uh, for his agent to bring forth the message of the hour which is Jesus Christ. So I uh, hope that clarifies that and simple. I want to open this morning with a this is actually a <clears throat> a, a song but I'm going to read it like a a poem and uh, we just happened to come across this and we, we've been around uh, for many years and we don't exactly know where it comes from, but uh, I'm going to read it just to share it with you. Away upon a mountain, the humble prophet of God, with hands raised high in prayer unto the Lord, he was taken by surprise when he opened up his eyes. God had placed there in his hand a gleaming sword. Now the word of the king, he didn't miss a single thing as it cut away the veil before my eyes. God is true to his word and the message we have heard. I'm so glad he touched my eyes that I might see. All the mysteries of God are revealed there open wide. Jesus came to the earth to tell them to his bride as he promised in his word that they would never ever part because he had write his precious word upon our hearts. Blessed are your eyes, for they see the things of God that are spoken by the prophet in our day. And that prophet was William Branham. They were hidden from the wise and reveal to those who would learn. I'm so glad he touched my eyes that I might see. Amen. And I'm glad that he touched my eyes that I can see. So with that, let's open up with a, a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Oh Lord, we thank you as we were in a blind age, Lord. Lord, we were in Laodicea. And according to what you said in your word, that they were blind, they were naked, and they didn't even know it. And what had blinded them was the creeds and dogmas, carnal interpretations of man. But Lord, you have made a way of escape. Lord, you come once again, just as you did 2,000 years ago, and you came and you delivered us from that house of hell, Lord. And Lord, you opened up our eyes, and when our eyes became open, all we could see was you standing before us. And you, that manifested word, the word that was promised for our day, was standing open before us, being manifested right here on earth in flesh, Lord. So, Lord, we're so glad today that we have eyes to see, ears to hear. 
what the Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ has said to us. And Lord, we believe that you're still speaking even yet to this day because we, our commission was that we would tell it again. And this we will do, Lord, as you would give us strength to do it. So we love you this morning. We praise you and thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So, the <clears throat> so this morning we want to, I'm going to look in and read, uh, 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 matter of fact, I've got three scriptures here I want to read and they're all kind of pertaining to the same thing. Imagine that. And, uh, but we had uh, just came back from South Carolina, we were up <clears throat> with the meetings there with Brother Glenn Lee uh, and so on, and we had some <clears throat> visitors come down. We got to meet some some uh, new people and got to have some fellowship and good fellowship, good food, good company, and we really enjoyed it, and uh, we just had a good time, as you always do with the presence of the Lord. And Yes, I really felt the presence of the Lord there. I felt like that He came right along with us and He manifested Himself just the way that He chose to. So we're glad for that and we thank Brother Glenn and his little assembly there for putting it on and uh, giving everybody a good time, good fellowship and good food and so on. So may the Lord continue to bless them. Now, to our scripture reading, I'm going to read one scripture out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 27, and then I want to go to the first chapter, first chapter of Ephesians, and I want to read a couple of verses there, and then I want to go to the first chapter of Colossians and have a reading there. And uh, the title of this this morning is Headship and Body Are One or Are Become One. So let's read 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. So now that's very important. <coughs> this is Paul way back in the first age, the beginning, and he's telling the Corinthians, he said, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And remember, he said, know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost in another place. We used to sing that little song, know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Oh, well, the Holy Ghost, that's the Spirit of Jesus Christ. All right, now, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And hath put all things under his feet, and yea, to him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and all. So, uh, because we're talking about headship and body now, and they are one. Now, let's look over to Colossians uh, chapter 1. We'll start with verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? the firstborn of every creature. Well, I can believe that because he said, Jesus, he said, now is the firstborn of every creature. So Jesus was the image of the invisible God because God is a spirit, but he became a man in, he became a man, a human being, in Jesus Christ. And that was the beginning of the creation of God. So, he is the firstborn of every creature. So, 
He is the beginning of the creation. We, he's the firstborn. And we are the continuation of not another, but the same creation because it's by the same spirit. All right. For by him were all things created. <clears throat> oh, you mean uh, just like it was in Genesis 1 where it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Period. Yes, that's him. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. You mean God created all things? Mean he created the devil? Absolutely. The devil was a created spirit. And God created him for a purpose to be his enemy he had to have an enemy that was anti-god anti-christ anti-word and he was and is so that settles that and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Where is he wanting the preeminence at? He's wanting it in all things, but he's wanting it in the church. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And then we say, for in him, Jesus Christ was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right. So that's our scriptures. And remember the, the title. Headship and body are one. Okay. I want to start off here in uh, Revelations 10, uh, verse 7. And... Uh, I want to read this scripture here. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, and Brother Brown said he begins to sound, not first pool, not second pool, but third pool, the opening of the words, the mysteries revealed, the mystery of God, the mystery of God, should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. So, when this seventh angel, which we know was William Brown, vindicated prophet, no doubt whatsoever, when he begins to declare the word, the mystery of God. Now, the mystery of God. Who God is. Where He lives. Where He dwells. All about Him. The mystery. But you know, as far as we can tell today, the biggest mystery of God was when and how was He coming? Well, and the people say, well, well, you know, He'll come like this. Well, really? And you think that that's what it is? Well, and then he said the seventh seal was the coming of the Lord. People say, well, you know, it, it, was, in kind, it was in kind of a way, and, you know, it was like this. No, he that said flat out the seventh seal was the coming of the Lord. It's the thing that Jesus said he didn't know nothing about. The Father didn't say anything about it. The angel knew nothing about it. Only God himself knew about it. But one day he was going to fulfill that, and he did, and he had a prophet on the scene to give us the mystery of God. Now, I don't see what's... People claim that, well, well we, we're not preaching the mysteries anymore. Uh, you know, all the mysteries have been revealed. Well, all except, as far as you know, the biggest one. The one that nobody knew anything about. And that's still a mystery. And it is to them. But it's not to the elect lady 
because she was the one that was going that had her eyes opened up because she listened to the prophet. I need to go back and read that poem again. So, and now with that, <clears throat> I want to read out of the church age book, Brother Brown's book on the church age, here on page 327, and it's the first uh, chapter, or the first notation. It says, now, this messenger of Malachi 4 and, and Revelations 10, 7. Okay, this messenger singular of Malachi 4 and Revelations 10, 7. Okay, so what happened? The messenger singular of Malachi 4 is all one and the same because Malachi 4 said, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet, and it has to be a prophet for the word to come to. And people say, people, I mean, somebody told me, they, they said, I've been reading the message since I was in my 20s. And they was trying to tell me that Malachi 4 was to the Jews. He said, that's Old Testament. Well, what can you, what can you say to a person like that? I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's just evidently no understanding there. So why don't you just close it and move on? So, now this messenger of Malachi 4 and Revelations 10, 7 is going to do two things. One, according to Malachi 4, he will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. And this same person was telling me, well, he's talking about the Jews. Well, hello, all of the first church were Jews. Who did they think was in the upper room on the day of Pentecost? It was Jews. Hmm. So, According to Malachi 4, he will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. And they read that and they say, well, he's, he's talking about Jews. Well, hello, yes, he's talking about Jews. That's who was there. But not the Pharisees and not the Sadducees. And he's not turning us back to that. That would be like today, Brother Bannon coming along and said, I'm going to turn you back to the denominations. No. Hmm. Two, he will reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders in Revelations 10. He, not might, he will reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders in Revelations 10. And he's going to tell us what they are, which are the revelations contained in the seven seals. Well, we know that the seven seals were, all seven seals were revealed. Why were they revealed? Because he come and took the book and loosed them in Revelation chapter 5. So which are the revelations contained in the seven seals? It will be these divinely, not manly, divinely reveal mystery truths that literally turn the hearts of the children to the Pentecostal fathers, exactly so. Pentecostal fathers, the Jews of that day which God had chose out, like Peter and John and all the rest of the the, the disciples and the believers and come on down to Paul and all the rest of them. But no, people's, well, what can, you, what can you say? You can't. But anyway, what I'm getting to here, the mystery of God has been finished. All the mysteries of the thunders that were in the seals, they have been divinely revealed. Because 
the messenger that was here to do that, the messenger of Malachi 4, Revelations 10, 7, is off the scene and he has com completed his mission. But some people, they don't, they don't believe that. Well, they say, oh no, he left here. There's, there's some things we got to know. Well, that ain't what he said. And he said, I have one time to preach as a mortal. And it's now. And I have not shunned to declare unto you, just like Paul, the whole gospel. Hmm. That's what he said. So I don't care what somebody else says about it. I don't care what he said because he was God's mouthpiece. He was God's voice to me. Because, how do you know that? Because God said so. God backed it up. God put him in the scriptures. Some people say, well, you know, I don't, I don't see the name William Branham in the Bible. No, I don't see the name, but I see the ministry, and I see a man named William Branham fulfilling that ministry. So, that's good enough for me. All right. Headship and body are one, or become one. Now, I got some statements that uh, I'm going to look at here. And the first one we get to is... Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Christ is. People read that like Christ was. And they talk about 2,000 years ago. But no, this is Christ is. Present tense. Now. Our time. And what was Christ? He was the Word made flesh. The word that God said would be that day was there, manifested in flesh. And the word that God promised for this day is here, was here, in flesh, manifesting the word. All right, let's see what he said here. And this is 1963, there in Jeffersonville. When I think of it, I just see the denominations pass off the scene. Ooh, me too. Every time I read this message, I just see the denominations and all their teaching and all their folly and all their faith. It moves right off the scene. And everything else just going, see? When I see God's great purpose, revealing Himself and having, first, to reveal Himself in Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Well, we just read that, right? And then, uh-oh, and then to bring that fullness of the Godhead bodily, whoa-oh, into a people that he could have the preeminences, the oversight, the leading. Now, how about that? Christ is the mystery. All right? So we know, there's not a doubt, that, that Jesus Christ was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But it didn't stop there. He was the beginning of the body of God. And we are the continuation of the body of God. But, oh, no, you can't. Oh, uh, uh, somebody told me the other day, said, no, you can't, you can't do that. You're not even redeemed. I thought, man, are we reading the same Bible? Are we reading the same message? Evidently not. Because my eyes is open and he's still in Laodicea and he's blind. He's trying to read the Bible, read the message with his eyes closed. What do you think he's going to come up with? Exactly that, yes. All right, so he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and then to bring that fullness of the Godhead bodily into a people that he could have the pre Well, he's got me. Yes, Lord, whatever you say, amen. I might not understand it, but amen. That he could have the preeminence, the oversight, the leading. 
and where he's going to, where's he going to lead you to? Well, I tell you what, I was shocked the other day. I was talking to somebody that we had went to church with, my goodness, over 30 years ago. And we kept in contact and we moved in some of the same circles, the same churches and so on. And he was talking about a certain, I said, well, whatever happened to that person? And they said, oh, well, he, he's in a Baptist church. I said, what? He's in a Baptist church? And, and this per person had done some, done some preaching in a message church, had written songs about the message and so on, and then come down to this late day and wind up in a Baptist church? I said, before I'd go to a Baptist church, I'd sit in my room and I'd listen to the prophet. Now, what, what could you get out of a Baptist church? You're talking about, man, you're talking about sad. That is sad. But evidently, all that the Father hath given me will come. They will come to the Word, the Word for their day, and they will be that Word. So look here. If it's not for you, you can't make yourself do it. You, Brother Bram said, they drift right back. It's like an old piece of wood you threw in, in the stream and whatever the, whichever way the, the current is going, it just lays back and it takes it right on. Look here. A genuine, they fight against the current to get where they need to be going, not drifting along with some old denominational stuff. My. Mm. All right. Let's go on with this. Christ is the mystery. Now I want to coach it a little bit <clears throat> so that even the people listening to the tape will get the idea that can see. It would take me around the clock just to each, just each one of these subjects. But I hope I'm making it clear enough that you see what I'm coming to see. God expressed in Jesus Christ who was both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? We don't, people, they say, Amen! Praise God! Hallelujah! Yeah, they can shout about that, but when it gets a little closer home, well, you know, I don't know about that now. You get, you kind of get a little far off there. Well, if I'm far off, he's far off. Now, N-O-W, the complete fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in His church. The preeminence is. Did you get that? Now, not it's going to be, not one day will be, He said now. And they think, well, you know, he just uses that term now, 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 like no, no. Well, well, you think God just sends a prophet and he just uses his words kind of like catch, catch, catch or something like that? I don't think so. Now the fullness, the complete fullness of the Godhead body dwells in his church, the preeminence, all, that's A-L-L, -L, all that God was, he poured into Christ. We believe that, don't we? And all, all Christ was, was poured into the church, comma, the believers. And I want to, because Brother Brown, he taught that there was three kinds of believers. There was unbelievers, make-believers, and true believers. So I wanted to say he was poured into the church, the true believers not a denomination so look here this didn't go in a denomination anybody that knows anything knows that to be true well if that be true why do they come with a p 
Pentecostal denominational teaching. Hmm. Because their eyes have not been opened. And because they're still in Laodicea with Laodicea teachings. Which he said Laodicea was the Pentecostal age. Who would, that would that would be like Moses coming and they say, well, Moses, you know, we're not, we're not going out of Egypt. You know, Noah, he built an ark and you're supposed to build a boat. What good would that do? We out here, no, that wouldn't do no good. We got, we got, another, we got another piece of word here we're going to work on today. He's going to deliver us with a mighty hand. But people, that just goes right over the top of their head. He said, we'll get to that in a, a few minutes. And it'll take it out of your mind forever. It's going to take all this denominational stuff out of your mind forever. Yeah. If you can become a new creature, if you can get in the mind of Christ, people say, oh, the mind of Christ. Oh, my goodness. The mind of Christ is the Holy Ghost. Mind. Oh, is, is that right? Well, you know... Uh, no, that's right, yeah. Still in the Christ is the mystery. Then he asked the question, what is it? Question. Not them people, the headship and the body has, H-A-S, past tense, has become one unit, headship and body, has become one unit. It's God manifested in His people. God manifested in His people. He can't even get in contact with the rest of them. They, matter of fact, He come, tried to come to Laodicea, and what did they do? They shoved Him out on the outside and would not let him back in. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, why would anybody want to be in Laodicea? That place is total darkness. Well, what is total darkness? It's absent of light, and light is Christ. Somebody tell you they don't have, you tell they got a mental problem. That's all there is to it. It's God manifested in His people. That's the reason the husband and wife is no longer twain. Now, all through the Bible and through Brother Branham's ministry and preaching, he really ties together the husband and the wife, the bridegroom and the bride, because there was a separation, but there was going to come a time that they were going to be united. And they are united. Okay. He said, that's the reason husband and wife is no longer twain. They're one. God and His church is one. Christ in you. God's great revelation. He said, that's God's great revelation. Well, that's part of his ministry, is to give us these great revelations. Glory to God. Even bearing his name, his name is Jesus, the anointed. The reason he is called Jesus is, he is the anointed. When, what was he anointed with? The Bible says he was anointed with the Holy Ghost. He was anointed with God himself. He was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The reason is the anointed body of Christ Proving manifested God like that 
body did. Uh oh, what, what happened here? He went from Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago until from that body until this body, our body, the church, his wife. Let me read that again. Glory to God, bearing his name. His name is Jesus, the anointed. The reason he is called Jesus, he is the anointed, is the anointed body of Christ proving, manifesting like that body did. That body redeemed every of these bodies and through there God works His threefold manifestation going to the kingdom, risen, paid the price, we're redeemed, God has proved it, vindicated it, see? We're redeemed. Well, my goodness. That's where this end time message really started. When Revelations 5, he had been back there sitting on that seat of intercessory, mediatorial, and so on. But one day, when it was time, he stepped forth from eternity and went from a, a lamb to a lion, from a sacrifice to a king, and he come and took the book of redemption. Took the book. And all that he had redeemed was now in the book. He redeemed. Look here. We know when, when Christ died, he redeemed us at the cross. But he could not claim us until all had come in. And all was in that book of redemption. People say, oh, well, you know, uh, if he took the book of redemption in 63, well, you know, I wasn't even born until 93. What's that got to do with it? You were in before the foundation of the world. He put your name in the book. And who's going to take it out? Nobody. So, <clears throat> so people... They're trying to use uh, man-made interpretations. They're trying to make use denominational interpretation. They're trying to use theological interpretation, which all of them are wrong. Rather than just to say, well, God sent a vindicated prophet, and this is what he said. He said, we're redeemed. We're redeemed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But no, they keep trying to figure it out. So, we're redeemed. God has proved it. God proved that we are. How? He come and took the book, loosed the seals, and revealed all the mysteries to us. Vindicated it, see? Now, still in the Christ is the mystery. Oh, now, look, listen, this is, this is good. And we stand justified in Christ. We stand justified in Christ. Now, you know what justified is just like you never done it. Because that, we'll put it like this, that person, that nature, that done that is gone. We stand justified in Christ before Him because He cannot pass judgment. For he's already judged that body in which I am part of. What? How am I a part of it? Here it is. It's me. If my, you abide in me, in my words in you, then what you say, ask the Father anything in my name, it will be done because it's there justified glory to God. Now, and then they say, well, you know, I, you know, I remember 20 years ago, you done this and you done that. Oh my. Well, 
that just shows that you've got a memory. But what you're talking about, what you are condemning me with, God does not even remember it. And they say, well, huh? how, if, if I can remember, how come God can't remember? Well, look here. Brother Abraham said, look, we can forgive, but we cannot forget. But God can not only forgive, but He can forget. Because when he looks at you, he don't even see you. He sees Christ. So, it's really something. Somebody asked me the other day, they, they said, well, now, do you believe a, a preacher can preach when he's got a living wife? So I thought a minute. And I said, uh, do you believe that we're justified like Brother Brown talked. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about justification, real justification. That we're justified because it's, he said, it's just like you never done it. It is gone. But no, well, evidently, people say, justified, but they really don't believe justified. Because if you're justified, you're justified. And besides that, he said, we were already judged in the body of Jesus Christ. Look here, he knew how we were coming. He knew what we were going to be born in sin. Well, look here, if I'm born in sin and I'm here a sinner and I'm here sinning, hello? And they say, well, that's doing what comes naturally. Hmm. Look here. How about, how about the woman at the well? My, you reckon, you reckon she got justified? Just a young woman that said, uh, go get your husband. And she said, I don't have, he said, you got five and one now is not yours. And the terrible condition. But he didn't say, well, you know, you're just no good. He said, she said, sir, you must be a prophet. We know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. He said, I am he. And she, boom, was gone. Says, come see a man who's told me all things. Isn't this the very Messiah? Well, I could say the same thing today. Come see a man who has told us all of these things. Who had the very Messiah saying, Messiah sign. And people still scratch their heads and say, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no wait a minute. Nothing. Let's look at the ministry. You ain't got to look no further than that. It proves who it was. All right. So we're the redeemed. We're justified. Because he already done it. But no. People are holding it against you till your dying day. If they have to go back 30, 40 years and get something against you, it don't make any difference to them. They will do it. Now, Christ is the mystery. You, you know, I'm, I'm glad for this. I'm glad that God calls who He wants to preach. We, we're not a denomination. We don't have to go before some board somewhere. We don't have to have an IQ test or a mental test or any kind of a test. God gives us the test of the Holy Ghost and the test of the Holy Ghost is do you believe my word? Not some creed off somewhere. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Oh, if I could get the world to see that, well, it would be wonderful, but look here, it was not sent to the world. 
Jesus said himself, the world seeth me no more. Mm. Why? There you are. There is the body of Christ living, standing, redeemed, redeemed, oh my, justified in His sight. Why are we justified? Okay? Why are we justified? Question. Well, thank God He's going to give us the answer. We are His victory. We're justified. Why are we justified? Look here. You think He's going to have a church without spot or wrinkle or anything else. Well, He couldn't be the victor if He had some old church coming up was all torn and tattered and messed up and dirty and filthy and low down. That couldn't be His victory. We are justified. We are His victory. The church is His victory. We come forth in this last days with this glorious gospel. And this is glorious good news because this is the finish, the final. This is it. All of it. Not a piece or a part. Showing His victory. Well, how can I show is his victory? I say, well, you know, I done this and I done that. And oh, woe is me. Glory to God, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm of that new race. There's not one thing against me. If people could only see that and believe that. But look here, you can't believe that if you're not part of that. And it lets me know that a lot of people are not. Showing His victory. He died for this purpose. And we are proof of His victory. Look here, we, me, you, the body of Christ this day, we're proof. Because He's got the preeminence in a people that He can lead and He can show and He can guide. And they believe what He said rather than some denominational creed. Hmm. Amen. When we see Him, uh-oh, when we see now, get your eyes, get your eyes right. When we see Him coming down, and living amongst the church. Well, wait a minute now. Oh, you got him coming down here and uh, he ain't come down yet. <laughs> he come down on the day of Pentecost. Who do you think that was in the upper room? That was him, Jesus Christ, that come in spirit form on the day of Pentecost. Oh. Oh, my. When we see him coming down and living, living, right here, living. If he's going to be living, he's going to be living in a body. That's where you live at, in a body. Living amongst the church, that's with a capital C, that's his victory. Shows that he, he couldn't keep him in the grave. Neither can they keep us. That's right. And we're already potentially raised because we raised from the dead. Uh-oh. Now listen. We're raised from the dead. Unbelief in His Word. From, what, are you, what were you raised from? From the dead. Unbelief in His Word from denominational creeds. Uh-oh. Well, i tell you what. Some people have not been freed. Some people have not been raised. Because what? They're still dead in trespasses and sin. And sin is unbelief. 
So we're raised from the dead, unbelief in his word, from denominational creeds to an eternal word of the eternal God, which is him, his self, working through us, manifesting himself that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I know that's hard for people to believe that, but it's not hard for a believer to believe that. They say, glory to God, hallelujah, amen. I believe that, and I'm drawing the benefits from it. From glory to glory, he's changing me. He's changing me. He's changing me. His likeness and image to perfect in me. The love of God shown to his wife. Amen. So praise God. So, I got another statement here in the Christ. And look here. This message was what? Almost four hours long. And he boom, 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 boom. He pounded this thing over and over and over and over again. That's it. Christ, the Word. He was the Word. He is the Word. And the church becomes the Word by making Him, no, excuse me, by Him making her a part of Him. And that's the Word again. Look here. You can't get away from the Word. He was the Word, He is the Word, and she is the Word become because she's part of Him, part of Him, the Word for our day. And that's the Word again, personally identified by Him. His property alone. His property alone. She is redeemed past tense, by Him, through Him, for Him, and for Him alone. She's redeemed for Him. No one else. And I could say something, but I'll just maybe let that pass until another time. But let me just say this. God don't want his wife out flirting with something else. That's just all there is to it. He wants her true to him, the Word. So she's redeemed by him, through him, and for him, and him alone. That's right. Then, what's the devil howling about? It's that it's being revealed. Okay. He said, what's the devil howling now? That this great mystery, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. The devil's howling. He don't, oh, he don't want this to get out. Well, let, let me, the devil is a spirit and he, he can just fly around through the air. But no, what he has, he started from the beginning. He had to have something to get into. And in the beginning, he got into what was almost a man, which was a man because he produced another man, the serpent. And he done his damage. And now, well, that, well, he said he's howling. Well, how is he howling today? He's howling through a bunch of false preachers, false anointed, fake preachers. All they are, they are nothing but an instrument of Satan. And he's always worked through the ministry. Well, if you wanted to, if you wanted to mess up something, where would you go? You'd go right straight to the source, wouldn't you? And that's what he's done. And he's got all of these howling. Well, you know, there ain't no such thing. We're not the fools of the Godhead body. God has not come down. He, but well, that cloud wasn't him. We're still looking for grace to come out of the body. 
out of the, the graveyard, bodies popping up? You know. No, we don't know. Because we caught the revelation. Our eyes become open. We could see real good. So he's howling through these fake preachers. They are the devil's voice. The devil's got a voice. Amen. And it's through these preachers. They, oh, this can't be, that can't be. These people are crazy. Don't listen to them. Okay? That's what they said about Jesus. And that's what they said about the prophet. And that's what they say about the true ministry today. No difference. And he is an evil spirit using man. That simple. I had jotted this down. Head and body are one. Head and body, that's what we've been talking about all this time. Head and body are one. We've looked at the scriptures, we looked at the message, we've seen what he said. One. Fullness of this day. Head and body are one. We are the body of God. Just like the body that was born of Mary was the body of God for that time. You say, well, yeah, that's right, because the scripture said that that body, Jesus Christ, the man, was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So he was the body for that time, and we are the body for this time. And he is the head to his body. I don't know how. Headship. Head has come down. Head. He's the head of his body. He was the beginning of the creation of God. We just, he was the firstborn of every creature. He was the beginning of the creation of God. And Brother Ram said, we are the continuation of that creation, not another creation, the same creation. I don't know how people could miss that, but they have. Now, I want to finish up. I was thinking about something the other day, and somebody had made a statement and said, oh, we're going to meet him in the air. I thought to myself, hmm. I want to meet him in the air. And I was, was thinking about that. And I went back to the scripture where that comes from, 1 Thessalonians 4. And I was reading through that. And uh, the first verse of first where he's talking about this is in verse... 13 of 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, he said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. He's talking to brethren, people that are born again. He always addressed his, he says, to the saints at Ephesus, to the saints here, to the saints there. And he's addressing this to the brethren, not to the world. Amen? I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have. Now, there is some others which have no hope. And these others are not brethren. Okay, so... Now, he didn't, he didn't want them to be ignorant. So I said, well, so I just looked in the lexicon back there while I had, had it open. And it said this, one, talking about ignorant, to be ignorant, not to know, not to understand, unknown, two, to make, to mistake, be wrong. So now, okay. He don't want us to make a mistake. He don't want us to be wrong. He don't want us not to know. He don't want us not to understand. And he don't want it to be unknown. So he's going to tell them what's going on. Okay, so he's talking to the brethren. 
Then later on, all this gets in the Bibles and goes all over the world. And now everybody picks it up and they're reading it like they're brethren. Well, they come to find out they're not. Because they don't know the inside. How do they not know? Because they got a carnal interpretation. Look at the flesh can't reveal this to you. Only the Holy Ghost can reveal this to you. You don't even know who Jesus Christ is with all of His worldwide. Unless the Holy Ghost reveals to you who He is. So, now let's read this. And I did make this statement. I'll go ahead before I get into the, the scripture. Comment. People are willingly ignorant because the absolute truth is here since the opening of the seven seals. Now, didn't we settle that to begin with? The messenger, one messenger of Malachi 4 and Revelation 10-7 is going to do two things? Yes. And he done it. He completed that. Okay. Now, I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning the th them which are asleep, that you saw are not, even in others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even them also which sleep in Jesus, because if you're sleeping in Jesus, that's all you are. You're not dead. People in Jesus don't die. They just change their dwelling place. And we know where they go. Brother Ben went over and seen them. And you... <clears throat> Even them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. Bring with Him. That was God. You said, that was God. Well, Jesus is God. And Brother Bam said, that's Jesus. Oh, my. And he said, we were all there. Well, people say, well, I wasn't there. Okay, you wasn't there. I ain't going to argue with you. If you ain't there, you're not there. I was there. Okay. Sleeping Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. And Paul said, let me tell you this. What? I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. And he didn't come to bring us Pharisee and Sadducee doctrine. That we which are alive and remain. We which are alive. Now, back in Ephesians, Paul said, you who were once dead in sin and trespasses, now hath he quickened, made alive. So that's the way you get alive because there's, there's literally, my goodness, how many? Millions upon millions upon millions of people that are alive naturally, but they are dead. And the scripture says, a woman that lives in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Uh -huh. So the only way you can get, be a part of this and be alive, you have to be born again. Yes, sir, you got to have Jesus Christ living on the inside of you. Oh, they say, well, no, that, that's the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm talking about, the Spirit of Christ. That is Him. Okay. As you're, the Word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, the ones waiting. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay. 
the dead in, dead in Christ. All right? So that, that's talking about the ones that's asleep again. Because if you're dead in Christ, you're not asleep. You're, you're not dead. You just change your dwelling place. And he said, which which are alive and shall be called together. Oh, here we are. Let's see. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, now this, this is the ones that are alive here, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, caught up, caught up, together with them in the clouds. Okay, this is the cloud. Jesus was taken away in a cloud, Acts 1, and he come back in a cloud. Just like he said. But people said, oh no, no. And look here, this is not a this is not a rain cloud. This is not something called by a thunderstorm or something. This is clouds of glory. Brother Brown said, there is Jesus. Uh-huh. But that goes whoosh, 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 right over the top. Carnal interpretation. This carnal interpretation. Then we which are alive and shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so this is where <clears throat> I was trying to get to here. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. Okay. And I thought, I said, meet the Lord in the air. Well, what's this? You know, just go up in the atmosphere and how we just, just meet him in the air when we've already met him, when we are his body and he's the head and everything else. Yeah, okay. So, but this is my thought on it. You meet the Lord in the air. It will be the same kind of air that filled the upper room and fill the believers. You say, what are you talking about? Uh-oh, they was all up in the upper room and all the windows and doors was closed because they were scared the Jews was going to get them. And all of a sudden there come a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled all the room where they were sitting. And cold and tongues of fire set on each one of them. And that fire and wind went whoosh, down into them. Where did that wind come from? Where did that air come from? It was a supernatural manifestation. God had to have some way when they was going to tell us that He could show us something had happened because that was the Spirit. Well, even Jesus, when he was talking to Nicodemus, trying to talk to him about the Spirit, he even he said, the, you know, the wind blows, this is worrying, but he said, you can't see the wind, but you can see the results. Well, look here. If you've been caught up with him in the air, look here, I'll see the results. You'll know, you'll know where you're at, and you'll know what's happened. Okay? So, it would be the same kind of air that filled that upper room and filled the believers. And look here. When they come out of there, they had been changed. They was over there scared to death what they was going to do to them. And then when they come, they said, Men and brethren, let it be known unto you. And he said, let me, let me tell you something. Something has happened. Yes, and something happened to us too. It would be the same way Paul saw him on his journey. Remember when Paul was going on the road to Damascus and all of a sudden, boom! That great light and they all, Paul fell to the ground. And he saw that light and he said, Who art thou, Lord? Capital L-O-R-D. 
And that light, that pillar of fire, spoke back and said, I am Jesus. Well, my goodness. And did Paul get changed? Amen. So, it's exactly. So it would be the same way Paul saw him on his journey when he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the, the light said, I'm Jesus. And look here, and Jesus said, I come from God. Okay, I come from God. Okay, the cloud, the fire, the theophany, because one time he was manifested as a fire in the bush, and he talked to Moses. One time he was in a cloud, and one time he was in a body. And he said, I come from God, and I go back to God. And when he met him, when Paul met him, and the people met him there, he was back to that spirit again. But he manifested himself as, as wind and fire, and manifested himself to Paul as a great light. So, I come from God and I go back to God. Brother Ram said that cloud picture in Life magazine was Jesus. If the air is natural, so is the shout, voice, and trump. If you believe, Brother Branham, they were not natural and neither is the air. That is a carnal interpretation of that scripture. Because people said, oh, we were, was it just a hello? A shout? He said the shout was the message. The voice was the voice of God. The voice of the messenger. And the trump was calling them to the feast. None, none of those are natural. So, <clears throat> so what is it? We're talking to the brethren. We're not talking to the world. The world will never receive this. And, no, and neither will an unbeliever receive this. Because they have nothing to receive with. The rapture is a revelation. And somebody asked me, they said, uh, what are you talking about? The rapture is a revelation. The rapture is a revelation. A revelation is something that is revealed personally to you by the Spirit of Christ. It's revealed personally to you. You didn't get it to some, some group. No, you got it as an individual. And it's real. It's just like when, when Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father, which is in me, has revealed it to you. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build my body. Amen. So, the rapture, is a revelation. And he says, you're going to find out one of these days that when you when you go to heaven, and they say, oh, I'm going to heaven. Oh, I'm going past the moon and the Milky Way and the stars and everything. I'm going to heaven. You don't fly off somewhere. You don't fly off somewhere. Well, that's what they all want to do with that. I just seen a picture on the internet the other day and it had it had the, the the great expanse and off in the sky was the picture of Jesus way up here and down here was was a, a woman dressed up like a bride and he was beaming her up like come on up Scotty and I thought to myself so I had to make a comment on that and I did make a comment. I said, you know, that picture, what you're looking at, was fulfilled in 1963. And here you are. And, and people, carnal, carnal, carnal. My. 
So he's done told us we're not flying off nowhere. He said, you don't fly off somewhere else. Now listen, you're still right here. When this happens, you're still right here too. Just in another dimension faster than this one. Amen, Brother Ram. I believe that. I really do believe that. But you know, that's what the problem is. There is so many carnal and ter I'm talking about just absolute carnal, fake fables that have been put into the dialogue of supposedly Christians that if they don't have the Holy Ghost, there's not a chance. Calling Jesus on the scene. There in 1963 in Chicago. Calling Jesus on the scene. Well, he was definitely here because he come on the scene fully in 1963. Let's see what he says. And so it, you know, it might have been, been the young John that hadn't had his heart so scarred with so much theology. He must have said something like this. Think of it. Right here in the ship, this one that is identified by Jehovah's word to be Jehovah's servant and whom he is pleased is right here in the ship with us. What a secure feeling. I have that same feeling because I know that he's in this little vessel too. And I am safe and secure in him. Oh, tonight, if we tonight could only catch that vision, hmm, the very Jehovah that made the heavens and the earth is right in this little vessel of ours. While we're sailing like Solomon, for the Holy Ghost is Jehovah in spirit form. In in you, see, God, the Holy Spirit, is God Himself in you. Jesus said, at that day, you'll know that I am in the Father, the Father in me, I in you, and you in me. Oh my! That is an oh my. Then God, all that God was, He poured into Jesus. And all that Jesus Lord was, he poured into his church, capital C, divided himself on the day of Pentecost. That pillar of fire come down and busted itself up, the Shekinah glory, and put it in different ones, tongues of fire set on each one. The Holy Spirit, God, identifying himself in human beings. Amen. God. And they say, oh, no, I don't know about that. I am redeemed. I am redeemed by glory divine. Oh, glory, glory. Yes, I'm redeemed. So God is identifying himself today in his body. And I got one last statement. And this is the super sign. And God is going to give a super sign this day. And he did. Super sign Three part. 1963. <clears throat> Notice. Super sign. They've got a superman today. they got fictions of a superman. And all these other super things. But the church has got a super sign. God. Back in the church. Manifested in human flesh. 
Look here now. He's given this at Monument at Jeffersonville, and then people are probably going, what is he talking about? But he was. God back in the church manifested in human flesh. God united with man. His super sign. That's God's super sign. God in man. God in flesh. But people say, well, I don't see nothing that's super about that. Well, if you get it in you, you'll think it's super. And if you get your eyes open, you'll know it's super because you can see it. No. Hmm. Poor little kids believe in Superman, jumping off of couches and buildings and everything and think they're going to fly. Well, you think, well, that's silly. Well, how about a bunch of so-called believers think they're going to fly? My. Huh. Mm. Notice. Super sign. They've got a superman today. They got fictions of a superman and all kind of super thing. But God has super got a super sign. God back in the church. Manifested human flesh. God united with man. He's super sign. Notice the eternal sign. An unfailing sign. And it'll never fail. Man. And the Word and man become one. When God's Word and man becomes one, as St. John, the first chapter says, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's the super sign. Oh, if that was a super sign of that day when that same Spirit was on Jesus Christ come into His church to manifest the written Word for today. That is still the super sign. The church can have a sign of a council. All of them getting together for a fake world peace and all want to be. The Baptists can say, we got a million more than 44. The Methodists can, can make all kind of brags they want to. Oneness or trinities or whatever they want may be. But the super sign is still God ever remains true to that super sign. It's God in man manifesting His written Word. His Word. When He, the Holy Ghost, is come upon you, He'll reveal these things and show them to you. And He will show you things to come. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Exactly. But no, they don't want him to be the same. They want to keep him at a distance somewhere when you can't do that. If you do that, you're not even part of it. God and man has become one this day just as it was God and man become one in Jesus Christ. Now it's God and wife are one and she is the body that he is living and working and manifesting through. And that's, that's just a simple truth. I mean, you can't dress it up and you can't dress it down. It is what it is. So, well, God's good, and I'm glad that my eyes have become open. My ears can hear. Somebody told me, that, well, you need to listen to brother so-and-so. <laughs> I, 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 I said, I need to listen to the prophet. I don't need to listen to brother so-and-so. I need to listen to the prophet. That's where the voice is. Praise the Lord. Well, it's been good to be with you today. I've enjoyed talking about the message of the hour. Jesus Christ. The Word that's manifested for this day. So we thank Him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You again today. Lord, it's so wonderful when we put ourselves in the picture 
when we put ourselves in the scripture, when we see ourselves as the written word manifested, it, Lord, it gives it a whole different light. It makes us a part of you because you are the word. Lord, so we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for the simplicity that you have sent your message this day. And Lord, as sometimes as I read the words that your prophet has spoken, I am just totally amazed how it is so put together that anybody that has the Holy Ghost, there's just no way for them to miss it. And you made it that way on purpose. So, Lord, we thank you for that. We give you praise and honor and glory. And thank you so very much for what you've given us this day. And we give it all to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless.